Today, I would like to present my uh, personal way how to participate in the energy transition if you're living at a in, a rented, uh, in a rented apartment. And the challenges of this are that usually you don't have access to the roof. You cannot modify the building permanently, including any modification of the electrical installation. And usually you don't have permanent access to the electricity meter. But there is a solution for that. Uh, it's the so-called uh, balcony power plant. And just let me present uh, how it works. Uh, this may be a laser pointer, or I take the cursor instead. You can see it. So this is a solar panel. Um, it's a small one, um, very light one, 1.5 kilograms. Uh, it's just 110 watts peak. Um, it's connected with these DC cables to the microinverter, so the uh, solar panel is providing DC current. The microinverter is uh, converting that into AC current, and that uh, can be fed with a uh, Shuko plug to the uh, electricity grid. Um, but there are some uh, restrictions, as we are, uh, or not all of you, but many live in Germany. So, the good thing is there's no electrician required. You uh, have to ensure that the total power of the inverter is below 600 watts. You need to re register at the grid operator. You require electricity meter with a backstop. And you need to register in the market master data register, in German, Marktstammdatenregister. Um, but if you wait until next Friday, um, there may be a um, modification of the law that it uh, gets a bit uh, more simple and that the inverter power may be lifted to 800 uh, watts. I've shown you a very tiny setup on the photograph before. Now let's uh, look at a typical arrangement of a balcony power plant. So it may consist of multiple microinverters. Um, their total output power uh, must not exceed uh, uh, 600 watts under the current regulation. And they may be connected to one or multiple uh, solar panels. The important thing is uh, that the ratings of the solar panels fit to the voltage and current uh, ratings of the uh, microinverter input. And so it's possible that you have one large one with in this case, 370 watts peak, or maybe multiple smaller ones like I've shown you before. Uh, watts peak means uh, the power the panel would provide under more or less uh, optimum conditions. You would not uh, reach that always, especially, uh, it depends especially how you mounted it. Yeah, and finally, um, it's just connected to the power outlet. But now let's take a look at um, my setup. It's a bit more complicated. So I have some solar panels, around 440 watts peak, uh, which are connected to a microinverter, and they, when the sun is shining, they would just provide that power to the grid. But there are some more panels, uh, about 600 watts peak, which are charging a battery and this battery is dis uh, discharged over another microinverter and could uh, provide power in the time where the sun is not shining sufficiently or not shining at all. To do so, I have to um, yeah, create some, uh, yeah, some stuff um, from the part of more or less electrical engineering, so I have to put a fuse box in between to secure uh, the uh, wires from overloading. I have to um, add uh, a protection for uh, discharging the batteries too deep. I have to limit uh, the inrush uh, current uh, that uh, the microinverter is not uh, overloaded, overloaded when being connected. So it's done via resistor and uh, time relay. Um, um, making a short so, uh, circuit on that res resistor after a few seconds. And there is finally a variable power limitation, which, which is required as we do not want always uh, 
to uh, feed 180 watts from the battery, but just as much as we need. And in my setup, it's included in the micro inverter as I will show you later. Here's a view from outside. So the smaller panels are those who are directly uh, putting their power to the grid, while these uh, are the, in total, 600 watts um, charging the battery. But we need to know how much uh, consumption we have and how much uh, energy we need to provide uh, from our system. So for that, uh, I used a lot of different uh, devices for measurement. So the most simple one is this, where you have a display directly showing um, the uh, power draw of the connected device, while all others uh, could be read out remotely. These devices uh, could not distinguish between, uh, current, uh, between current flowing inwards or outwards the socket. So even if you connect, uh, let's say, a balcony power plant to that, they would still say it's consumption. So you just have to know if it's really consumption or not. Another way is to um, connect a readout device to an uh, electricity meter. And that could distinguish between uh, consumption and production, at least a newer one. A really old one would just run backwards, which is currently not allowed in Germany, but yeah, maybe changed, changed soon. Uh, yeah, but now let's uh, take a look at some measurements I've done. At first, the devices which are not in the focus of my project. So devices used for cooking and cleaning usually consume um, a lot of power, which is much more than the balcony power plant could provide, um, but are operated only for a short time um, of the day. Oops. However, if you are using a balcony power plant uh, without a battery, um, have a good sunlight uh, at noon, yeah, it would save about, let's say, 30% of your energy if you are um, cooking at that time when the sun is shining or doing your laundry at that time. Maybe an option if you are uh, working from home. Yeah, but now let's um, go to the more interesting devices. So I did a few measurements. Um, the Wi-Fi and LAN devices in my apartment uh, in total consume uh, 18 watts, which is uh, 0.4 kilowatt hours per day. It's, yeah, an, uh, yeah, an important contribution to the total uh, energy consumption. Similar, the ventilation system uh, with uh, 13 watts. Now, if you if these two um, devices are running all the time, 24-7, which means that for uh, consideration in my application, I could just assume them uh, as constant energy consumption. But now let's take a look at the fridge. If you look at the energy consumption per day, it's the same as the ventilation system, although it's uh, about uh, five times um, larger um, power draw. That's because the fridge is not running continuously, but um, yeah, running at uh, several intervals, short intervals throughout the day, which means we need a measurement for that. The same as the PC workplace. It may consume up to 150 watts, and that uh, way I uh, tested it. It's a significant contribution over the day, and it may vary if uh, the CPU load is a bit lower, it could, could go lower or higher, so we should measure that as, as well. The same for the TV, it's also a relevant contribution. Yeah, and how do we measure? We take um, these uh, smart plugs, so with these two, it's Maestrom and Shelly, um, there is a REST API available. So here's an example request and the JSON response for the um, uh, Maestrom uh, smart plug. Um, and these are being used for measuring my consumers. 
however, as you see, these devices, they do not look weatherproof, and they aren't. So for readout of my uh, balcony uh, power plant, I've chosen another solution. It's an uh, open source project uh, for reading out uh, microinverters from the uh, manufacturer Heumals. It's called the OpenDTU. It's based on an uh, ESP32 microcontroller. And at first, it provides a web interface where you get the um, AC and DC uh, performance of your microinverter or all your microinverters, which are read out with this uh, device. So there are two different uh, frequencies where the inverters are um, operating, 2.4 gigahertz and 866 megahertz, depending on the type of inverter. So when uh, you are getting an open DTU, uh, you need to look up first which one you need. And don't uh, take a Wi-Fi um, ready microinverter from Heumals, so that doesn't provide that interface anymore. It's just for uh, yeah, putting data to, to their cloud. Yeah, and another important um, option of this OpenDTU is that we can set the limits of the microinverter. We can set persistent limits, which means after reboot, reboot maybe just because, uh, because yeah, it went dark and then the inverter shut down. The next day, it remembers what was my limit. But uh, in case of the battery, uh, I'm setting a non-persistent uh, limit, um, but not via web interface. It will be um, done over the API. So here I just show the uh, API call to read out data. There is a similar API call to set uh, the limit. So here you see the limit, which was currently set for that one, the uh, power, voltage, current, and so on. And also, also the total yield of this uh, device, uh, so you know what it has uh, fed into the net, uh, into the grid, since, uh, since it was connected for the very first time. Yeah, but now as we know how to uh, measure our consumers and our um, producers, um, we can combine that to an application. So it's also available at, uh, as open source on GitHub. Um, it's running on a Raspberry Pi at home. Um, it runs on a Raspberry Pi Zero with Wi-Fi, so the smallest one, single core, but I recommend uh, the um, zero 02 with a uh, quad core. But currently it's running with a single core and it works. Um, at first we start with the known consumers. I mentioned before the ventilation system, the Wi-Fi router, maybe some other consumers I didn't mention there. I added all them up, uh, put them in my config and yeah, then they are always considered. Next, the smart plugs are read out. So the devices like the TV, the computer, and the fridge. And now um, I start reading out the inverters with the help of the OpenDTU so that I get um, the current uh, yeah, energy production from uh, the solar panels. And now, depending Ah, on, the, on the difference, um, I will adjust the battery inverter limits. This, all this information, the measured values, are published uh, to a Redis channel and also appended to a Redis list. This is done in 15 second uh, intervals, so it's repeated all the time. Yeah, this data is going to, um, to Redis. And I have a backend implemented with fast API listening to that channel, providing a local um, live view, which I will present later. In a similar way, I could also provide a review. As I mentioned before, I'm appending data to a Redis uh, list. It's, and for every day, there, there's a new list that is read, read out and provided as a day review. But that was a local web interface. I wanted to access my data from everywhere without 
uh, sharing with it with everybody. So I, per, um, I rented a one euro uh, virtual machine where I run uh, Docker. Uh, then I cr um, added a small um, process on my Raspberry Pi at home, which is pushing data. Listen, it listens to the Redis channel where I put my reports, pushes that data via WebSocket to my uh, backend running on fast API on the virtual, ma virtual machine, and finally pushes it to a Redis channel there, which is named after the, um, yeah, after the email address of the user, which I will explain next. So from the user's device, there will be a login uh, using um, GitHub OAuth, uh, where I get a cookie for my web page. And then I'm, with this cookie, uh, I'm consuming the data over a WebSocket. And it's, yeah, uh, the backend is listening to the um, individual uh, Redis channel. For the review, uh, it's a bit different. So the push data daemon is waiting for review requests from the, um, from the WebSocket. And when it receives um, a request, it is pushing that report there. And it's also transferred to Redis. Mm. Now when the user is requesting um, a date, then um, yeah, it will be uh, published to Redis. Uh, from there, it will be consumed uh, by the uh, WebSocket where the Raspberry Pi at home is pushing data. Yeah, and then uh, I wait for five, or now it's more or less 10 seconds um, for the response, and then uh, I will show that. Now let's try a live demo. I hope it's working. <coughs> so it takes usually a few seconds, yeah. Now this is uh, some data just from the electricity meter, what uh, I'm reading out as well. And now we see at home it's sunny, so 300 watts from the sun. The battery is nearly uh, fully charged with 20, more than 27 uh, volts. The consumers are now just uh, about 53 watts, so the fridge is not running. Um, or maybe the fridge just started to run. Let's wait a few seconds. Uh -huh. So I'm trying to calculate unknown consumers from the difference uh, between, ah, it's not, uh, it's just the sun disappeared and that uh, modified the calculation. Okay, now let's come. So I'm comparing um, readout of the, um, of the electricity meter with uh, my measurements. And yeah, they have a different time scale. Yeah, now let's take a look at the uh, data from this day. So this was my uh, consumption. The peaks you see here is my fridge. Now let's see what we got from the sun today. So yeah, it was not so much, but it partly covers my uh, consumption. But yesterday it was a bit more sunny, so the battery was full. So I nearly covered all the night uh, from the battery. And uh, as I'm also now using uh, dynamic pricing, I could uh, also um, display the prices here um, just for comparison. And it could be maybe an option in the future if I know that my battery will not uh, be fully charged for the whole night, that I, um, yeah, um, yeah, make it dependent of the price. That maybe I consume electricity from the grid overnight, but in the morning when the electricity becomes expensive again, I, I'm using the battery. But that's maybe some future idea. Yeah, I could also use the data from yesterday. So the data uh, here is prepared, so the plots are done with Plotly. Um, processing in the background is with uh, Pandas and NumPy. I'm using the Plotly JavaScript version as the um, Python Plotly uh, version would take for one of these plots, I think about 30 seconds. And 
yeah, so I'm now just using pandas to pre prepare the arrays and using the JavaScript version. Yeah, and that's uh, all. And I'm now open for questions. Thank you so much, Janis. We have uh, many questions here from the audience. Do you have to inform or ask your landlord to install a balcony power plant? Um, yes, I informed them, and finally they agreed. I, they were a bit surprised that it were more panels than initially planned. So I asked them for the first three, and then the balcony was, fu was fully covered. By fi but finally they accepted it. <laughs> Did you calculate the amortization time of your system? Um, not yet. Uh, and if I would buy the devices now, it would be much lower, also because of my experience. So I also um, purchased some devices in the beginning, which I don't use anymore, and are running maybe at colleagues' home and so on. OK, and then another question is, is it possible to scale the PV power even higher as long as the maximum power output of the inverter does not exceed 600 watts? Is there a limitation? Um, in principle, it would be possible. But in my case, it's because of the 24 volts. And the inverter maximum input is uh, 10 or 11 amps. So that's currently the limitation. But there could be some ways maybe switch to 48 volts or Maybe what I also tried and is working with my software, just using two inverters, both running to 180 watts maximum. But usually my consumption is below that, and so I currently don't use it. But uh, it's possible, even if you have much more space for the panels and have much more energy available. OK, thank you. And then another question is, how were you able to read out oven and stove as they don't have a Shuko plug? Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit tricky. So one option is um, if I'm getting the data from the readout of the electricity meter, but it's not, not the main part of my project. For the cooking, I have some induction plates instead of the built-in plates of my apartment, and they are just connected with a Shuko plug. Um, yeah, but in that case, I just uh, took a, uh, for, the, uh, for the oven, I just took a readout of the meter before putting the pizza into and then afterwards, and then it's just the difference. Okay, thank you. And then um, here's another question. Which power provider is offering a flexible tariff? Do you save money with this flexible tariff? Um, in, so in my case, it's TIBA, but I think the other provider... Uh, being here is uh, offering something, uh, something similar, but you need a smart meter in that case. With Tibber, you have just this small readout device. Um, the end of the question was? Uh, um, do you save money with this flexible uh, and Normally, yes. So recently, I um, did the laundry with elf, uh, 11, kilowatt, uh, hour, uh, 11 cents per kilowatt hour. But as my consumption is now really low with all the, um, the optimizations. It's only a slight difference to the uh, local energy provider because it's a slightly um, larger uh, base price with that. Okay, so, yeah, sorry. So I think my monthly price now would be uh, in total for electricity 13 or 14 euros this month. Okay, and then people want to know, why did you choose Redis as data storage? Oh, because I'm used to. Um, so I'm using it as a message broker as well as a data storage. But to be honest, I'm not storing the data there forever. It's uh, each day there is overnight a daemon um, archiving that data to JSON files. But just to save time during the talk, I didn't mention that. Okay, we have uh, still five minutes, so um, no, you, you have some time to answer now in uh, yeah, more words if you want. Um, another question is, how did you estimate the ideal battery size? Do you know um, how much time it takes to get this return on investment? Um, no, it's more or less, uh, yeah, it, it's trying out. So I started with, 
I'm not sure if I started with one or two batteries. And then a colleague purchased also one. And finally, he went to 48 volts. And then he had one left over. And I got it. So now I have three. But I started with two. But three are working well. OK, it's a lot of uh, questions about return on investment and uh, investment. And another investment question is, where do you get a server for one euro? Um, maybe look at uh, some of the well-known uh, providers like uh, Strato and so on. Uh, there are, uh, I think they are called like virtual private server mini or however. So I started with one euro. To be honest, I'm now using one with, for five euros, but I'm running several applications on that. But I started with a one euro run. OK, thank you. And how long did it take you to set it all up? Um, so last year, this time, I did know nothing about the topic at all, I think. And I started somewhere last summer uh, recording data. So maybe I could even go try to go back to that, but it's not tested before. So maybe just September 2023. 20, yeah, there's still uh, some data, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, it was more or less. I started recording uh, that um, data at that time, uh, but finally creating this uh, web interface uh, with the yeah login and so on uh, was more or less when I uh, created the uh, PyCon proposal at in December. Thank you. Another question is, could you include solar power prediction into the pipeline? Do you know any suitable models that could predict the local solar power? Um, so I played around a bit with, I think it's called PVLIP, uh, but it didn't match too good to um, my conditions. So there seems to be some factor in between. And yeah, I do not I do not know nothing about weather prediction stuff and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's not included here. OK, thank you. Um, another person wants to know, can the setup be placed in a home instead of an apartment? What would you change or do different? Um, yes, it, it could be. And one of my colleagues uh, will try this soon. Um, maybe one advantage is uh, to connect to maybe one socket, which is directly connected to the main fuse box uh, in the basement instead of connecting to uh, yeah, a socket which is connected with others in the same circuit. It's maybe the safest option. Yeah, and you have much more space for battery panels and so on. Could maybe consider really feeding maybe 600 watts over the day or however your need is. Okay, and um, is your code open source and available on GitHub? So you share the address. Uh, yeah, I could go back. There it is. It's not yet documented well, so there is an installation instruction for a part of this. But just the, uh, ask me if you try to get it running. Okay, and then um, is there any professional solution available that you used for feature ideas? <laughs> okay, <laughs> like is there any software that you know about that has like similar features where, that you ah, look okay. at and you're like, okay, I'm going to try to implement this myself? Um, yeah, so I was lo more looking at the hardware and my uh, yeah, impression was that there is no um, hardware uh, available which is offering an API where I could decide by myself how to control it. And maybe some commercial devices have also an option to connect these smart plugs, but often you have then, in that case, buy them from the same manufacturer and so on. And it's much more expensive than building it by your own. But maybe there, I don't know, maybe there appear soon some devices which are more useful for th things like that. So I see if, if you want to reproduce is the largest challenge is really to do the uh, electricity stuff. So there you should have some knowledge, the um, remote control or the readout, or if you just, you could also use the project just for measuring. So even if you're not feeding a battery, you could also use it just for measuring consumption, production, or even only consumption, only production, whatever you like. 
Yeah, thank you so much, Janis Lübbe. Thank you.